Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. As always, it's a joy to be able to bring the good news of Jesus to you. The text that we're going to consider this morning comes to us from Ephesians chapter 5. We've bounced around a little bit. We, went, we were doing Ephesians and then we looked at the gospel. Now we're back to Ephesians where... Paul addresses husbands and wives. Now, I have to tell you that uh, sometimes the way our translations work, um, you know, they're very smart people, and God certainly used them, but there are times when I wish they did a little bit better job, and this is one of those times, okay? Now, I'm going to ask you to break out your Bibles this morning, If you brought your own, hallelujah. If you didn't, you got one in front of you, okay? And turn to page 978 if you're using the Pew Bibles. If you're using your own, you're on your own. I have no idea. (laughs) And you'll see when you go to the bottom of the page, 978, Verse 21, it says, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. And then it's got an artificial break there where it says hus- wives and husbands. That's, those are edits, okay? The Bible doesn't, you know, the Greek doesn't have that title there. And then it says, wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord. Now, what's interesting here is that in verse 22, um, hupotasso, which is the Greek word for submit there, is not in this verse. It's not in 22. It's connected to 21, where it says, where Paul is urging the people to submit to one another. And then what it actually says in the Greek, I'll translate it for you, wives to your own husbands. Okay? Are you following me? If somebody, if you're you're not, raise your hand and I'll say it again. Okay. The, The Greek in 21 has the verb for submit. Okay? And it's submit to one another, okay, out of reverence for Christ. Then in verse 22, there is no verb. It's just a phrase that says, now remember, all these numbers are put in too. The Greek doesn't have verses and chapters, okay. So it just says, wives, to your own husbands. So what's, what's happened here? You know, there's, no, there's nothing theologically wrong with this, but it has broken it up because what Paul is calling us to is a life of submitting to one another. And then what he's going to do is say, wives, to your own husbands. Okay. Now, that's important that he says to your own husbands. See, this isn't a male-female thing. Okay. It's not... Women, you know your place, okay? You're to submit to men. No, to your own husbands. This is a life of submitting to one another. The husband submits to Christ. The wife submits to the husband. The children submit to the parents. And he will say, slaves, submit to your masters. He's talking to Christian slaves, okay? He's calling everybody to submission. In Romans 13, he will say, as Christians, we need to submit to the authority over us, okay? The governing authorities. Now, if you are, I, you know, all this gender stuff is real big right now, okay? And if you fall on either side of that worldly argument, okay, you are not going to be happy with what I have to say today, okay? In either side, I'm not, I, this will not make anybody happy, 
okay? Unless you, un unless you want to understand what God wants from us, okay? Because what Paul is saying here is that as Christians, we are called to a life of submitting to one another. And he says husbands are the head of the wife as Christ is the head of the church, okay? And he says, husbands, you have to love your wives even as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Now, here's the thing, okay? Headship comes with sacrifice. See, and we, we get this wrong a lot, okay? Uh, in a lot of our Christian families, the man wants power. He wants to control his wife and thinks that he has God's blessing to do it. But he's not taking headship because headship requires sacrifice. See, Jesus loved the church by giving himself for her. And husbands are called to lay their lives down in the same manner. And unfortunately, in in the Christian church, at least here in America, we have a lot of men who want power in their relationships, but they're not sacrificing themselves. They're, a lot, they're, they're leaving it up to the wives to parent the children and to bring them to church instead of being the head and laying the, their lives down as Christ laid his life down for the church. You see, headship requires sacrifice. The sacrifice that Jesus gave for us is the same sacrifice that heads of households, Christian households, should be laying their lives down for their families. Now, most of you know I was raised a Roman Catholic and in those days, when I would think on, you know, what's going on here in this passage, immediately <clears throat> the Pope would come to my mind. That's, you know, that's power, right? Pope's got power. But in those days, also, Mother Teresa was still alive. She doesn't have any power, okay? I, I could blow her over, okay? But boy, did she have authority, right? When she spoke, people listened. Why? Why? Because of her sacrifice. See, and that's, that's where authority comes to play. My, my mother, I could, by the time I was 11, I was, you know, I could have beat her up. I would never try, okay? Why? Because her life was a life of sacrifice for her children. And my, my father, he sacrificed himself for the family. He, was, he, he brought us to church. He taught us the things of God. He laid his life down. He worked to make sure that we were all provided for. Their lives were lives of sacrifice, and he loved my mother, and she respected him because they were in line. He submitted to the Lord, and she submitted herself to him. Now, I'm not going to recommend this movie to anybody. It's R-rated, and it's R-rated for a reason, but it's a Steven Seagal movie. He's one of those martial artists, okay? And it's a movie called Under Siege, and it's about this uh, mutiny on a ship and, and uh, there's this woman who's, you know, the, the female lead. She's brought onto the ship to, uh, as a dancer for a birthday party that they were supposed to have for the, for the captain of the ship. But the men have been captured uh, and... Uh, Steven Seagal was put into the refrigerator. He gets out, okay? He meets up with this girl, 
And she's like, oh, we're going to die. You know, uh, he, he was apparently a cook. Didn't know that he was also an ex-Navy SEAL and could beat anybody up. And so she's like, we're going to die. I mean, the only person I have to protect me is a cook. Well, the minute that they run into the bad guy, she realizes he's no ordinary cook. Okay. And so they rescue... Uh, many of the crew members and so Steven Seagal's character says to the woman now you stay with these guys okay and I've got some work to do and so he goes back out to kill bad guys and he looks behind him and there's the girl right right next to him and he said I thought I told you to stay with those guys so you'll be safe and she said, the safest place on this ship is right behind you. And I remember hearing that line. I said, that's, that's it. That's the Christian husband. The safest place on the ship. Somebody that, that knows the word of God. When he doesn't understand it, he seeks it out. How does God want me to live? How does God want me to trust in him every day? So that I approach every, every trial and tribulation with faith in God. You see? And let the family then stay right behind him. Because he's the safest place on the ship. That's what we're called to. And husbands, you're to submit yourself to the Lord and trust in him. Trust in his love and mercy. And so when you live your life and you meet trials and tribulations, you don't freak out. You don't worry. I talk about this all the time. You know, we, we call ourselves praying 24 hours a day. Okay? But all we're really doing most of the time is worrying and calling it prayer. You tag an amen on the end of it, you call it prayer. But really, you just worried yourself all day long. No, real prayer trusts that the Lord's hearing you and that he's going to give you the strength of his spirit to overcome. We want to pray all our trials away. But God wants us to trust him and face those trials. And that's what Christian husbands are called to do. And we cannot confuse this with power. Okay? Men want to be in charge. Me, Tarzan. You, Jane. You do what I say. That's not what Paul is getting at here. This is about mutual submission. It's about the body of Christ submitting to to the proper, to the proper superior, okay? Husbands submit to the Lord. Wives submit to their husbands. And if he's doing his job, she'll be happy to do it. Happy to do it. Now, I already said that headship comes with sacrifice. We understand how Jesus as head of the church sacrificed himself on the cross for us. But I'm going to remind you of a forgotten sacrifice. See, who, does, who did Jesus submit to? He submitted to the Father. So the Father is head of Christ. And I said, Headship comes with sacrifice, right? What sacrifice did the Father make? What does John 3.16 say? This is how God loved the world, that he gave his only son. How many of you have children here? I bet you that you would be willing to lay your life down for those children. Am I right? Now, ask yourself this. Would I be willing to lay my children's lives down for sinners? 
Would you be willing to lay your children's lives down? <laughs> no. No. I'm not going to lay my children's life down for anybody. That's exactly what the father did. When Jesus was praying on that Thursday night and we're told that he was sweating great drops of blood, he told his disciples that his soul was troubled to the point of death. I am telling you that the father was sweating more profusely than even Jesus was because his sacrifice was greater. We think, oh, he's God, so it didn't bother him. <laughs> Guys, he loves. God loves. And he loved his son, and he was going to watch his son go into self-exile. To The scriptures say, he who knew no sin became sin for us. The father had to watch this. And when I hear the words of Jesus being nailed to the cross, what does he say? I, he is talking to the father because I think the father had angels ready. To come and rescue him from sinners that would mock him and nail him to a tree. And save him the, the injustice of taking sin onto himself. I think the father was ready. And Jesus said what? Father forgive them for they know not what they do. He was reminding the father that they had, they had salvation to accomplish. It was harder on the father than even on the son. It's a forgotten sacrifice, isn't it? We're shown it in a typological way in the Old Testament with Abraham and Isaac. We, we can't even fathom the idea, can we, that you would sacrifice your own child that's exactly what Jesus, exactly what the Father did in sending us his son out of love for us. See, that's what Paul is trying to get us to understand. How greatly we are loved. What the Godhead did for us and now we're called to love one another in the same way. And understand, this is, not a, this is not telling us, men, you have the right to boss your wives around. That is not what this is saying. This is calling men to sacrifice their lives for the sake of the people that God put in their life and and put under their care. He said, I want you to be the safest place on the ship. I want you to, you, I want you as men to lean on me and to trust in me. And she will follow. I've done enough marital counseling to know that for the most part, Women are not wanting to be in power, in control. Oftentimes, they're forced into it because the men in their life are big children. They would love to lean on their husbands. So this is a call to you as men. To seek first his kingdom and his righteousness that we find at the cross. Get your strength from God to meet life's challenges 
and your, your wives will follow because you're the safest place on the ship. And don't forget ever again the sacrifice that the father made in the giving of his son so that you could be set free and have eternal life. Amen.